Hi, my name's Keith Cooper and in this video I'm going to address a question I get asked quite often that is, is it worthwhile making your own custom profiles, ICC profiles for printing? So usually for printing photos or artwork or anything. Uh, in general, if you want the best results, you should use ICC profiles. Profiles that have got lots of stuff that covers how to make them and things like this, but not whether you should even bother. Profiles are for a particular printer and for a particular paper and a particular ink set. They enable you to get the best out of what that paper and ink and printer can do, if they're well made. So, why should you bother making your own profiles? Quick bit of history of this. This particular inkjet printer here that I've got with that, this is an Epson 2850, ET2850 that I'm just testing. Now, this particular printer is a relatively basic printer. It's an ink tank printer with four inks, and I'm going to be testing it and uh, looking how good it is. And as part of that, I will be making profiles. Now, I usually make these profiles available when I've written the review, so if anyone wants them, contact me. They're, you know, they're available for non-commercial use. I have a printer here that has no profiles from Epson. And that's what you get with cheaper printers. Uh, cheap being a relative term here, but certainly the better printers you get, the more print you pay for a printer, the more you're likely to get some included profiles and it's gonna be easier getting profiles. But I said the history of it. When I first started tinkering about color management and profiling and printing, it was about 20 odd years ago. And one of the very first reviews I did was looking at a solution from ColorVision as was, Data Color now, called the Print Fix. Now, this was a little scanner device and you printed off targets. And these are, these are targets, these are A4 targets for making profiles. And this is on Epson Premium Luster, which I'll use for the initial testing for this. These, you would measure them, and they printed off tiny little targets, and they went through a tiny little scanner, USB scanner, and it went through it, and it checked you out a profile. Now, some people, uh, usually those with lots of expensive equipment, and who'd been involved in this for years, said, oh, no, no, these are rubbish, they're no good. Um, I disagreed. They could be useful. Certainly if you were using a paper on a printer that you didn't have um, a particular profile for it. Um, the other thing to remember is that 20 years ago, printers were much less um, the same. If, you got a, if I get six ET2850s here, I can make a profile on one, and I can be fairly certain that profile will work for all of them. Well, 20 years ago, variation in printers, uh, of any quality printers, meant that custom profiling was a big thing. In fact, there were people who used to make custom profiles. You'll still find some people do make custom profiles, certainly used in commercial print, and that is a completely different area altogether than what I'm looking at here. This is art and photography. So if you look at, if you go back and you think, well, you know, what were people doing then? People were making profiles or having profile, paying to have profiles made. You could buy kit at various levels. And I've tested all this. I've got reviews going back nearly 20 years of different bits of color management kit and things, how they work, what they're like. Um, I've never evaluated them precisely in terms of accuracy because most of the time it's about making better looking prints. Uh, one thing I discovered when I got into color management fairly early on was that color management was about making better looking prints that were right first time more often. There is none of this spurious notion of perfection of correct color. Now, there are applications for so-called correct colors, selling commercially and whatever, but for most photographers it's about making pleasing looking. If you're looking at art reproduction, then that's a whole different area and that can be really complex. In fact, it's technically one of the more complex areas of photography and you really do need to understand color management to be able to do it well. But that's art repro, that's a very specialized thing. So over the years, printers have got better. They have got more uniform. That means if you print just using the printer driver, no color management in particular, you will get much better results now than you used to get 10 years, 20 years ago. Printers have just improved. They are better. What does that better mean? It means that the profiles in general, assuming that the paper is reasonably well matched to the printer, and that's what media settings are for, 
Now, assuming that it's fairly well matched to it, the profile has less work to do to wrangle the colours to get them producing a better looking print. That means that it's easier to make printer, uh, printer profiles these days. Now, somebody asked me about using scanners for profiles. Um, this has been something that's been 20 odd years. In fact, that very first print fix that I looked at was a scanner based solution. Problem with scanner based solutions is it has difficulty if the papers have optical brightness in them. It also has, if you think of it, only three channels to measure uh, the colours of the target. So yes, you will find scanner based solutions for profiling. They can work, they sometimes work, but when they don't work, they're useless. Um, and it's, and there's no easy way of predicting beforehand. Now, I know people do make them and they're satisfied with them. It is easier these days, certainly with modern printers, but um, certainly better printers anyway. But let's sort of, so that, that's the background. It's easier to make print, uh, it's easier to print these days, means the profiles have less to do, means the profiles are easier to make. You think, well, great, um, perhaps the kit would be cheaper to make profiles. Uh, no, it still can be quite expensive. Um, I looked recently at making profiles using the i1 ISIS uh, scanning spectrophotometer, uh, the large one I use for making profiles, and you know, I, I showed how that was, how, how that worked. If you wanted that system, it would set you back currently around about five thousand pounds, four five thousand pounds. So, we've straight away in look at who's profiling for. If you are a fine art printer and you make big prints, you've got a big expensive printer or two, or several of them, and you sell prints and it's your business, and you have the skills to use it and the time to learn those skills, then yeah, it's, it's a no-brainer. Custom profiles can supposedly, and I have to say supposedly because it's never as obvious as it used to be. Years ago, custom profiles used to make a real difference. These days, less so, um, not always. But if you are in fine art business, if you run a studio, if you do big prints and things, then you're almost always going to make your own profiles. I have that where you may even pay people to make profiles for you. There are still people who will do it. And in general, if you're paying to have profiles made, make sure that someone isn't just printing off a target this size on an A4 sheet and measuring it because um, any old software that uh, don't makes profiles can make reasonable profiles these days from a target this big. If you want specialized profiles, you want somebody who wants you to print much bigger targets than this. Now, you might think, oh, the more patches, colored patches I have, the better the profile. Well, not necessarily. There is a sort of diminishing returns and there's a certain point where the variation in colored patches here is less than the uh, accuracy of the device you're using to measure them. So for this particular printer here, this is uh, just a, this is a thousand odd patches. It's about the minimum I would consider for making a profile. It will make a good profile, but I have actually in this one, I've print created a second target, which is an optimizing target. Now I'm going to be looking at that in terms of color printing on this printer, which is quite a challenge to produce good prints on this. And also I'm going to be looking at black and white. Now that's a real challenge on a four ink printer like this, but I, you know, I'm, I'm confident. I think I can produce some interesting results for it. So anyway, we've looked at the really high end, the professional side. What comes next on the sort of limit on the range of things? Well, what about someone who uses a high end printer? Let's say amateur. Maybe somebody sells a few prints. Um, professional who makes a few prints to sell for clients uses a relatively high end printer, something like a Epson P900, a Canon Pro 1000, one of the bigger, or even perhaps like this big printer I've got here. The yeah the and P5000, that's a big printer, but it's still only a 17 inch width, but it takes roll paper and it's a cutter and it's a very nice printer. Um, that works well. What about if I've got one of those? Well, in a way, there is less of an obvious case for spending enough money to make a difference. Because if I've got that high end printer, um, I really don't want a budget profiling system, something like um, using a scanner or something, you know, one of the more basic models. I need something, if not quite the level of the i1 ISIS that I had here, certainly something considerably more expensive. You have to look at that then in terms of the expense and the time you're going to take in, you know, to get to learn it. Um, and also, 
if you've got um, a relatively high-end printer, P900 Pro 1000, if you've got one of those, all the big paper manufacturers will make profiles for you. And as I said, printers are much more similar these days. There's less unit-to-unit -unit variation, which means that manufacturer profiles used to be dismissed by people saying, oh, well, the CAN profiles, they're no good. They are much better than they used to be. They can still be a bit off and you may be able to do better, but you need relatively high-end kit. Um, or you need the time to learn how to use software like Argyle CMS, which is, you know, which is free software. The kit still costs you money, but the amount of effort you have to put in to learn how to use it. I'm going to say this is going to appeal to people of a technical bent who want a new skill to learn. Um, I do get people ask me about profiling and it's pretty obvious that what they want is they want to learn to make printer profiles in the hope that that's magically going to make their prints look better. When actually the real question is not that, it's their photography, it's the basic editing skills, it's all the basic stuff, it's composition, it's whatever. It's all the sort of stuff that people would rather ignore. So do make sure that if you're thinking of getting into making custom profiles, that you're not just looking at it as a way of, let's say, diverting attention from doing what you should be doing, which is sort of concentrating on your, um, actually concentrating on your uh, photography. So there we've got someone at a, at a fairly advanced level, expensive printer. Mm, is it worthwhile? Even there are third party paper suppliers here in the UK who, if you buy paper off them, will make a custom profile for you. Um, so once again, if you're buying a good paper off them, and there are lots of very good papers available, because remember, there are only a few basic paper suppliers, makers out there. So if your paper supplier will make you custom profiles, once again, do you really want to go to the effort of learning to make your own profiles? And will they be any better? Because unless you're prepared to spend the money and you know, learn how to do it, it's unlikely that your profiles are really going to be that much different. Um, it's, they don't make that much difference. If, if you've got a good paper and a good printer, the profile is not doing that much. And if you get an already good profile, the fact that you've got a slightly better one doesn't make the good one go away. Now, you may find that if you really get into it, you can fine tune your profiles, how you make them, um, how you create, the, how you adjust them, all the different settings. You can tweak them to your heart's content and maybe make, come up with slightly smoother transitions in colors, various, there are all kinds of ways you can do. But this has nothing to do with taking and printing photos. This is color management. So if you want a hobby in color management, get yourself a hobby in color management. Just remember where you're coming from and why you're doing it. Because as I say, profiles you can get for free or when you get paper are pretty good these days. What about if we drop down a level? I mean, yeah, I say down a level. It's, it's not, let's say you're an amateur photographer, you're interested in making prints, you're looking at a printer like the version up from this one, something like an ET 8550. I've got lots of stuff looking at 8550. One of the reasons I was interested in that one is because it has a mixed ink set. So it has a pigment black, dye black, and then it's got the colors. So, and a gray ink as well. So the combination of those make for some absolutely superb prints. It's still the printer that has most surpassed my initial impression of thoughts of what I was going to get from it. Um, it was far better than I thought it was going to be. And part of that was due to profiling. Now, if you've got an 8550, you'll find suddenly a lot of the big manufacturers and paper suppliers are not offering profiles. So there, if you want something like that, you either need to make them yourselves or find someone who will make them for you. So a paper supplier that will provide profiles. As the 8550, and um, the, there's not really a Canon equivalent to that at the moment, but as, as that printer becomes more popular, you will find profiles are available more widely. I've got a whole load of them I made when I was testing it, and they're available as well for different papers and things. So you've got that. It's a good printer. It's an affordable printer. If you're interested in making profiles, it will make a real difference if you're just using just papers and testing and things like that. It's in terms of the return and quality, making custom profiles is perhaps 
perhaps the most obvious improvement for something like the 8550. Now this is a step down from that in that it's only got the four inks. I'm going to look at this and see what we can get out of it. This one, yep, this one will probably benefit from custom profile. Well, almost certainly it'll benefit from custom profiling. It perhaps, because there's only the four inks in it, it won't have quite the range of something like the 8550. But I think you can still get pretty good photos out of this. You then have to decide, you know, why have you got a small printer like this? Is it because this one's got a scanner on it. This is this is like an office printer that happens to print photos as well. I'm not going to be looking at sort of office related functions and things in this. You know, there's plenty of other people look at stuff like that. I'm looking at what sort of pictures we can get out of it. Now this, I will definitely get a benefit from profiling. But would I recommend that to somebody? Well, not necessarily, um, because you know, if you really want to get the benefit, you would have gone for a slightly better printer. Maybe you're just dipping your toe in the water here. Well, it's going to be relatively expensive and take quite a lot of work. Now, even if you use something like CC Studio and the, uh, the uh, spectra photometer on that that looks like a giant tape measure, it was the old Color Monkey, then the i1 Studio, same, same basic device. Printer profiling there, yes, it works. Yes, it's great. It gives you good profiles. I'm yet to be convinced by the black and white profiles it makes, but yeah, it gives you good profiles of that. So really, hmm. Is that something that you might consider? Yes, it's at that better level of printer that you that it's potentially worthwhile doing your own profiles. Of course, when I say doing your own, you don't actually have to own the profiling kit. Um, now you can hire a profiling kit and things like that, but what I would say is that if you really want a good time, um, if you're a member of a camera club, Buy something like i1 uh, you know, uh, Studio or CC Studio as it is now. Buy that as a you know, club utility that people can use for making their own profiles. Particularly if you have print competitions and that, you can get into endless arguments around the bar as to the optimal ways of profiling and stuff like that. It's, it's the sort of stuff that you can discuss to your heart's content when somebody has finished giving you a lecture or you have the half time break and something like that. Um, I've suggested to quite a few camera clubs that, you know, that don't bother buying the expensive kit that I've got here because yeah, it's not not worth it. No, not unless you you know, you're particularly flush. I mean, if you've got the money, just go out and buy it. That's the solution for it. You know, you want to you want to do stuff. Buy a big printer. Buy yourself some expensive cameras and lenses. Oh, and by the way, make sure you get some you know get your profiling kit as well. Um, I do draw the distinction between people who just have far too much money for their own good and uh, in, in photography. I'm, I'm talking about people with more realistic budgets here rather than the oh yes I'll buy that new new Leica lens that's coming out and and whatever um, you know that, that's a different matter altogether but you know for clubs get one if we go down a level still to very basic printers and these are ones that might cost you a couple of hundred pounds or something like that or even less Yes, they can be profiled, but you may find that if it's something like uh, the Canon G550 I tested, a little ink, ink tank printer, very nice printer potentially, but the color management on it has completely been stomped on on Macs. I only test stuff on Macs here. It's been completely stomped on by Canon and there is no proper color management. Now, if you've got a G550, G620, something like that, I've got a detailed review that goes into how you can actually implement color management for printing but it's almost if you're at that level the idea of spending kit to do to get good prints from it well it's only worth doing I would say if you intend getting a better printer so for the if you've got a G550 you know, a G, um, G620 something like that if you're going to go to a Canon Pro 200 Pro 300 something like that then yes when you get to those printers Profiles are going to make much more of a difference, but also their printers because they're popular higher end printers from Canon that profiles will be available. So the fact you've gone up a level means that profiles are now available. So the need to make profiles has perhaps changed. If you're buying a sort of 100, 200 pound printer, I'm going to suggest it's because you're constrained for budgetary reasons and therefore splashing out on color management stuff really is 
not that great an idea. And your best idea may be to find a paper supplier that will make you a custom profile. Find a paper type you like, get one of the, some of the paper, get a profile for it. Um, you know, just unless you want a new hobby and you've got some money, extra money spare, then getting into color profiling with a basic cheap printer is, yeah, well, I, I don't know. I should just mention, if you use third-party inks, then it renders all current, you know, there's no such thing as compatible inks, not properly from a color management point of view. Um, if you're going to use third-party inks, you essentially need to do your own profiling um, or have profiles made. So that's where that comes in. Uh, that's at whatever level you use. Although if you're going for a cheap print and cheap third-party inks, I'm going to say you're emphasizing cheap in an awful lot of ways. And are you really bothered about print quality? Because if you are, don't be so cheap. So there you go. So the basic level, get into it if you really want to do it. But Making your own profiles is not the big thing it used to be even 10 years ago. Yes, I find it really interesting. It helps me learn about color management, all kinds of things. But I've done testing for this for years. Um, the market for color management kit, you can probably tell that new stuff comes out very rarely these days, and that's because it's not a big market. Uh, so think carefully about what you want. Think carefully of why you want color management and don't just think that, you know, it really makes it that much of a difference for having profiles made. Having profiles, yes. Having custom profiles, if other profiles are, are available, less so. Anyway, bit of a yeah, bit of a ramble there about color management, and different levels of printers. If you've got any specific questions, please feel free to ask. Uh, it's people's questions that drive me. Yeah, give me the ideas for making uh, these sort of videos, and uh, I do appreciate them. So uh, there you go. Oh, and please do subscribe to the channel if you're not. Uh, I'll be having loads more about this printer until I can, and I have another one as well. I have an ET8500 to look at as well. So lots of prints and profiling to do. Uh, just it is not for everybody. Just remember that one. Thanks for watching.